Okay, thanks everyone for joining us. We will get started. Welcome to our Minute session on healthcare and other useful apps. My name is Orby Dingwall and I am one of the Minet librarians. I'm Christine, uh, Christine Nielsen. I'm um, the other Minet librarian and I work out of Manitoba Health. Yes, and so this is uh, the first time that we have co-presented but from different locations because on Tuesdays and Thursdays, Christine is usually in her office at Manitoba Health. So that is exciting for us um, and also uh, please have patience as we switch between presenters. Um, we've been practicing and we think we have it totally un under control, but as we all know, sometimes webinars can be uncontrolled. So uh, we should be all set to go. So our objectives today, um, we're gonna make sure that you know about Minet's core services. We're going to make sure that you know how to search for uh, quality apps and also how to identify what they are. And then um, as with all of our MyNet sessions, we're going to be talking about the critical appraisal components. Uh, so how do you know if an app is good, whether you can trust it, whether it's high quality, all that kind of stuff. So those are our objectives today. We also want to make sure that you know how to sort of navigate within go to webinar because um so at the bottom of your if you lose the sort of box that's um on your screen the go to webinar box then you should have in a toolbar somewhere on your desktop um the little go to webinar it's like a um a flower with uh, six petals uh you can just click on that and that should bring your box uh the box back up and you might only see this little orange arrow um, and so if you click on that then it will open the box and once the box is open if you ever need to um, ask us a question uh, and sometimes we're going to be looking for some feedback so we're hoping that you'll use this questions box to provide us some input so you might need to uh, click on that down arrow and then you can type into the box. So hopefully that's straightforward. Now, um, since we've just uh, described about how to use a function, we want you to give that a try and let us know if there was something specific you were hoping to learn in today's session. So if there was a certain kind of app you were hoping to learn about or a certain way that you were um, uh, a certain type of way that you were hoping to learn about new apps or to assess them, that kind of stuff. Uh, we're hoping that even if your answer is no, um, we're hoping that you'll enter that into the, um, the questions box. So if you can do that now, we'll give everybody a bit of a moment to type that in. So partly it's because we really are interested in what your objectives are for today. Uh, but partly we just want you to be able to practice knowing where that box is. Okay, good. At least one person has um, responded. So we'll wait for a couple more of you to um, just type into find the box and identify. So again, if you can't find your GoToWebinar box, find your toolbar and click on that um, GoToWebinar flower. And then that should bring your box and you're looking for the question section. Okay, we'll let everybody, we had one response. Um, so I'm not sure whether you're just ignoring us or whether you're having trouble finding it. You can always send us an email as well. Okay, we are going to, um, so I'll keep going, but please do try to locate that box and try to send us a little message, even just to say hi. So uh, we always start our sessions. Welcome to those of you who, uh, this is your first education session with us. And also welcome back anyone who has participated in one previously. Uh, MINET is an acronym that stands for Manitoba's Health Information and Knowledge Network. And it's a library service available to staff of Manitoba Health Seniors and Active Living, all the fee-for-service physicians in the province and staff of the participating regional health authorities. 
Anyone is welcome to join our webinars. Uh, we have lots of, um, lots of seats available in our software. Uh, so if you know of somebody who's interested and falls outside of these, um, these categories, please do invite them. Um, and as far as the services, that, oh, here's our team. So Christine and I are here today. Gail is another librarian on our team. And, uh, and Cheryl is our amazing library assistant. So often she is the first point of contact when you contact us. So many of you will uh, have been in correspondence with Cheryl. MyNet has four core services which are uh, literature searches. So if ever you need information on something, we can do a search for you. If ever you need a full text document, uh, whether you've been doing your own searching and you've come across a paywall that says, please pay us $80 to read the full text of this article. Or if we've done a lit search for you and you would like the full text of one of those resources, you just send us a, a message and we will send you the full text. We offer a current awareness service, so on a weekly basis, we will send you an email with, um, they're all customized. So you let us know your favorite journals, your favorite authors, your favorite topics, and we will create a search for you. And then each week you'll get all of the new articles published um, uh, on your topics. And we also offer education sessions like this one. We also can come to you in person if you've got uh, team members or staff that have a particular thing that they wanna learn about, or if you just want to hear, you know, come and meet us and learn about the services, we're happy to do that. And of course, uh, the province has a provincial license to up to date, which is a great online electronic resource. And uh, if you work in a region or at Manitoba Health, you can just access it understands where you are, you can access it directly. Uh, but if you're off site, you can sign in with your library card to up to date. And so all the information about our services is available on the MyNet website mynet.ca. So we're going to launch a poll. Thank you for everybody who um, responded in the question box. I'm going to launch the poll here now and we're going to ask what kind of mobile device do you use? So if everyone could please vote. So still waiting on a few people. Almost everyone has voted. We'll give you about 30 more seconds. Okay, great. So 63% um, have an Apple product, an iPhone or an iPad, and 38% have an Android. Uh, so that's great. I am primarily an uh, Apple user and Christine is primarily an Android user. So it's a great, great mix and a great balance. Okay. I'm going to change the presenter over to Christine, Christine, right, Christine? Yes, please. Okay. There we go. All right. So oh, we actually have another poll. <laughs> <laughs> right away because you know why not um so our second poll is about whether or not you already know how to install apps on your mobile device just so that we can get a sense of where everybody's at so orvi if you could launch that that would be great So I'm afraid I don't actually see if it's going. Orvi, is it on? It sure is. And 82% have voted. So we'll give them about five more seconds. Okay, perfect. And the responses say that 90% um, say yes and 10% say I think so. Okay, well, that's I'm fair. Close it now. Okay, excellent. Um, so I guess we'll just kind of keep going and incidentally if you have questions along the way please you know do let us know um, just kind of a, as a general overview um, you would get your apps from uh, an app store so either um, the the, I, the iPhone store is that what it's called Orvi the iPhone store the I, iTunes Apple. Um, 
the Apple App Store. The App Store. <laughs> okay. Um, or the Google Play Store. Um, and of course, there are some apps that are available for both, but that's not necessarily the case. Um, and even if if there is an app that has both versions, sometimes they don't quite work the same way, right? So that's just something to be aware of. Um, it's kind of handy. They've they've implemented a process for sharing apps, so um, for family members, that kind of thing. So the App Store has that function, and the Play Store does also. You can see uh, in, in the Play Store, it's referred to as Family Library, and I'm not sure about uh, Apple, but they do have in uh, the Play Store a return policy. So sometimes you can buy something to try it out, and if you don't like it, um, if it's one of those things that can be returned, you can. And at the bottom, um, you can see I had downloaded uh, in 2015 a particular app, and I paid like 450 for it, and I decided it was not worth 450, um, and I returned it and canceled it, and I got my credit back. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, and Christine, just to jump on that, I searched around the App Store and different reviews and things, and I couldn't find anything that indicated you could return an Apple app. So it's not, I'm not definitive on it, but there was, um, you know, if somebody knows differently, please jump in. But it seems like that's not a feature in the App Store. Okay. Just one more reason why you should all switch to Android. Um, <laughs> but either way, whether it's it's Apple or Android, um, you kind of have to think about the same things when you're looking for an app. So if, if you want to get a particular program, you got to figure out what exactly is you're looking for. Um, we recommend that you read reviews, um, look at who made the, who made the app, pardon me. Um, I've got a note about the crap test here and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, and basically try it. If it's not for you, uninstall it. It's, it's not a big deal for the most part. Okay. Um, just a couple of words about reviewing apps. There's not really an official system uh, for reviewing apps. Like you can see there's um, reviews in, within the, like the Play Store or the App Store itself. Um, but it's, it's kind of a bit of a free for all, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so you kind of have to uh, take a look at the, at the information and see what, uh, what is available. Um, I always find like if, it, and, and maybe I'm just paranoid, but if, if the company that made it is trustworthy apps, I feel like maybe they're trying a little too hard um, to make me think that they're trustworthy, but you can see who's done what um, and you can kind of determine for yourself whether there's ethical, uh, um, ethical issues or conflicts of interest, that kind of thing. Okay, so just super quick, we're gonna, we're gonna try something new and exciting. I'm going to make my phone a panelist, um, and we're gonna have a quick look at, uh, Christine's Gmail, here we go. And we're gonna have a quick look at um, the Play Store. Right. Yeah, and as Christine's queuing that up, I'll just mention, um, this is again one of those things, sometimes uh, products make things the same for your Apple product and your Android product, but this is one of those instances where uh, with our GoToWebinar, which is the software we're using, only Android phones can, can show their screen, so my Apple phone can't, so that's one another one up for Christine here. <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm biased. Um, so you should be able to see um, my screen from my phone. And of course, they've got like the the little ads for games and whatnot. But if you have a particular uh, app in mind or a topic, you could just use the search box. I know uh, I'm going to look at Cookspiration, which is an uh, app that was produced by the Dietitians of Canada. And I actually have it installed. But um, in a second, it should catch up to me here. Hey, here we go. Okay. Um, and like I said, there, there's always there's always more information, right? So they've got um, an indication of, of how many times it's been downloaded. There's a, a star rating. Uh, if you continue down the page, there are reviews. Um, you can see what's, what's new. So they've added some 
functionality. They've fixed some bugs, which is always good. Oh, and uh, it's not quite caught up yet. Okay, um, and I always like to um, go to the more details. Here we go, read more. Okay, um, and it gives you it gives you their spiel, right? So their description. Uh, but if you keep going down the page, you can see the version. You can see who made it. You can also see, I think, which is more important. Um, and it'll just take a second here. Uh, you can see the last time it was updated, right? So if there's something that um, you're looking at and it hasn't been updated in three years, you know, maybe you know look for something that does something similar but is is more maintained. Um, this one was last updated last November, so maybe it's an annual thing for them. It's it's not um, super current, but I'd I maybe want to keep an eye on that. And it doesn't look like the screen is catching up. Seems a wee bit frozen. Okay. Well, that's really unfortunate. Um, okay. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So you can see that um, they've got some more information. Uh, they've got the email for the developer, so you could you could email them with questions. Um, there is. Maybe I'll go back. Here we go. So back to the to the main. Oops, I went too far back. Oh no, wait, I didn't. Uh, to the main um, page where you um, get the information. If you go down to the, you can see that there's there's reviews um, at the very bottom. Though they've got some other things, right? So you can visit the web page for the developer. You can look at their privacy policy, um, and you can look at permissions, right? And we're going to talk a little bit more about permissions in a minute. Uh, but you can see here uh, when it comes up that Cookspiration requires full network access. I swear it's coming. Um, it, it, it can view your network connections and view your Wi-Fi because this is um, a web-based app. Some apps you you download and they're actually everything is is contained on your device and so you don't need an internet connection. This is this is not the case for this one. Okay. So um well let's let's quit waiting for this. Orvi, I'm gonna get you to switch back to me as the presenter. Okay. And we'll talk a little bit about the crap test. Um, if you've attended one of our education sessions before we've we've all we've discussed this before kind of at length and basically it's kind of taking a, a critical eye to the information and the information sources that you're coming across so you want to make sure that what you've got is current um, like I said if your app hasn't been updated in five years maybe not the best one um, is the information itself reliable is it an authoritative source is there anything that um, you need to keep in mind in terms of uh, an angle? Like, are they trying to sell you something? Um, is this a particular point of view that they're trying to push? Um, and in the case of apps, there's an extra P. So there's permissions. And that's what data can it access and what can it do, right? Um, so as an example here, I've got a screenshot. I was looking at the America's Test Kitchen app. Uh, so it's like recipes and cooking stuff and all that. And in that that um, permissions category, I had a look and I'm not sure, I think you can read this here. It says that it can read your calendar events plus confidential inter information and it can add or modify calendar events and send emails to people without your knowledge. Um, if you're okay with that, well then, you know, by all means, get yourself the America's Test Kitchen app. If you're not, then, you know, you make the choice maybe not to get it. I am personally not okay with that. And I'll just jump in here and say, Christine is far more vigilant in reading her permissions than I guiltily admit. I tend to, uh, you know, and I, I, I hope that there are some attendees that are, are 
it's not just me. Um, but sometimes if somebody just tells me about a great app or if I just want to try it out, I'm guilty of just like accepting these things. And after Christine showed me that and was like, this app will access your email and send people an email from like from your account uh, or to all your contacts without you knowing, that just frankly terrified me. So if you take, uh, you know, three things away from this session today, I really hope that, I know that that's one thing that I've already taken away, is really make sure you're reading those permissions in your app store before you download something. Because although America's Te Test Kitchen has really great articles and it might be a really great app, um, I already have the cookbook. I can just you know, take a picture of the recipe I want and save it onto my phone. I don't need to have an app that's doing all kinds of things behind my back. Back to okay. you, <laughs> Thank you, Orvi. <laughs> okay, um, so again, kind of the, with the critical eye, assessing how the app makes money is usually a good idea um, because there are three ways that these folks make money. They can sell you the app, there are ads within the app, um, and they also collect and sell information about you, right? Um, I'm sure you've probably seen in the news um, articles about, you know, different uh, different companies that, like Facebook, how they, they mine data and they sell it to, like, political parties so that they can market and, and all that kind of stuff. And um, not long ago, Twitter became a, a pub publicly traded entity and they're worth like a gajillion dollars. And they they do that because they, they sell their, uh, they make money, right? They sell information about their users. Okay. So. Um, oh, sorry, on, Christine. Yes. Can't hear you, RV. Are you there? Okay, Orvi, we can't hear you. Um, Important aspect of assessment. Okay, sorry, we couldn't hear you. Could you could you repeat oh. that? Uh, just about it costs money to have an app, and that mm -hmm. all apps get money from somewhere. And if they're not really transparent about where the money is behind the app, then sort of take caution. I would say. Fair enough. Um, and and just kind of as a related note, when you're in your app store, uh, a lot of times if you if you don't have a particular um, app in mind, if you're just looking for some an app about a certain thing, like if you type in exercise or diet or whatever, um, you're going to get a whole pile of results that would be relevant. Um, sometimes they've got ads listed up at the top. So similar to like when you're doing a Google search, um, sometimes you'll get some ads in your, your f first few results. So it's just something to keep in mind that, that that's at the top just because it, it is an ad, but it will, be, it will be labeled or it should be anyway. Okay, oh, there we go, paid advertisement. Um, all right, so on to the fun part. Um, we are gonna talk about a few apps, but I mean, we can't say that we fully endorse, et cetera, et cetera. Um, everyone's got different needs um, and everyone has different preferences when it comes to apps, right? Um, but we're gonna basically kind of stick to things that people can access just generally. Um, some of them will be free, some of them won't. Okay, and I'm gonna pass it back to Orvi. Um, yes, oh, okay, oh. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure, there we go. Okay, oh, and just with those ads, I mean, sometimes um, it's the same as in your Google search. Ads aren't always, or aren't necessarily bad. Uh, sometimes they are exactly what you're looking for. Um, so, you know, sometimes it's okay to click on an ad, but sometimes it's just like, I can just ignore this because it's at the top because it's an ad. So we're gonna talk about apps for clinical practice is the first one we're gonna talk about. Um, and this is actually, um, oh, I'll just actually go back and say, when we were looking at apps to talk about today, our parameters were that uh, you didn't need an institutional kind of access to access these. So here at the University of Manitoba, 
there's a number of um, uh, packages that we pay for our electronic resources and some of them have an app with them but you can only access them if you uh, have access to those uh, resources so we made sure that the ones we're talking about today are ones that you that are either free or that either an individual can purchase and don't require any institutional affiliation um, and so we have included ones that do cost money and ones that are also free so one that is free for you is up to date in Manitoba. And we have um, another session coming up in September if you wanna know more about up to date. We also have some how to guides on our website if you're not already familiar. Uh, and so up to date is really helpful. Uh, this is a screenshot of the different screens. So um, on the left is just the, when you log into the app, it's, uh, you can just do a little search and you can, um, then I typed in bedwetting and you can see in the middle, I'm not sure if you can read it, uh, and it just talks about, um, you know, the management of bedwetting, the ideology and evaluation is the second one. The third one is the clinical presentation, evaluation and management in adults. And uh, so it gives you some different, you know, one of them is toilet training. So that would be a resource for patients. And then if I, I clicked on, I have picked the first one, um, and then you can see that's what's in the green. And it that's basically a table of contents, introduction, terminology, natural history, pretreatment, evaluation, that kind of thing. Um, so up to date is really great if you are looking for a step-by-step -step guide to take you through the how-tos of, um, of a particular uh, clinical presentation. Now, RxTx is uh, available on iOS and Android, and it's by the Canadian Pharmacists Association. And one really nice thing is it's available in French and English. So if that is important to you, this is a great resource. So it's Canadian, uh, French and English. If you are a member of the Canadian Medical Association, it's free to you. Um, and they have drug and therapeutic products. So some of them are free, the Health Canada advisories, some drug calculators, those are free. Uh, and it requires a subscription if you want to go into the CPS monographs and the drug choices. So this is uh, a little, this is a good app. Um, it's great in theory. I know that they're still working through some bugs and some different things um, so that people have sort of uh, I know a bunch of people around here that have access to UpToDate and LexiComp. They use those instead. Um, but it's uh, if you're looking for a drug resource, it's definitely worth checking out. Now, another one uh, drug related is Hippocrates. And this one has been around almost, it, it was one of the first drug apps and it's still going strong. Um, uh, and so it's for iOS and Android. Some of the content you have to pay for, but again, you can download it and try it out for free. And it's about drug prescribing and safety information. So um, some of the neat features, um, one of them is about pill ID. So if you have, uh, you know, spilled some pill bottles or if you're, uh, you know, at a family member's house and they've got um, uh, pills in a, in a, in a, you know, a, a daily pill um, container, but you can't tell which one is which or what they are, you can use the pill ID. Uh, it's a little bit fun. Um, and sometimes it's often very helpful. And it's just like, what is the shape of the pill? What is the color of the pill? Are there any identifiers on it? And when you plug all of that information in, then it comes out and gives you um, some ideas as to what it could be. And sometimes it is, you know, there's only one, one choice as to what it could be. And sometimes there's a lot. So it's just, uh, it, it can be really helpful. So this is, if you're looking for a, a drug resource, this is definitely a great one to download and try out. I think that's another, um, maybe a, a spoiler of our, of our session, is that uh, for some apps, you just, like, we'll give you some great recommendations of ones that we recommend, and you might wanna download them, try them. If they're not for you, don't worry about it. Don't feel obligated to keep trying to use them or to keep them on your phone. 
get them off your phone. Stop taking up space on your phone. You can totally delete them. Um, and sometimes you have to go to find a great app or a really good app. You have to go through a couple of different ones to find the one that's going to be the best for you. So another one for clinical practice is Pepid. Again, on iOS and Android. And again, some content is free and some content is um, you have to subscribe to. The origins of Pepid were with American emergency physicians, uh, but it's also relevant to others within who work in the emergency room and in other ambulatory settings. So this one is, is um, a good one for paramedics or uh, um, others who are in ambulatory uh, settings. And it's clinical decision support, drug companion, symptom checker that helps with diagnosis, that kind of thing. So this is your kind of setting where you're just looking to assess some, um, some apps that can help with uh, clinical decisions. This is another uh, really popular and common one. Oh, and here are some screenshots of it. So again, you know, on the left, that's your home screen. And then I did a search for it looks like um, amoxicillin. And then I wanted to go in and read um, um, read some information about it. And it it's now telling me about some of the dosing. Uh, so again, uh, go in and give these things a, a try. Then there are also a number of apps that are available with clinical practice guidelines. So choosing Wisely Canada, I know a lot of you are really familiar with this. Um, those choosing Wisely options, there's an app for that. And Diabetes Canada, they have their clinical practice guidelines available as an app, as does the Hypertension um, Canada and the Canadian Cardiovascular Society. Now, I know for some people you're thinking like, well, I, you know, I, I know how to go to those on the website. I, you know, have already downloaded those, um, I printed those, or I already have those accessible. So find, you know, just because they have an app doesn't mean you have to use it or that it's the best way. But I know sometimes, you know, an app is really small, you can pop it on your phone, then you don't have to worry about like, oh gosh, where did I save that? And you don't have to worry about carrying paper around. And it's also really good um, if you are in a hospital that's made of a lot of concrete and the Wi-Fi is terrible and you can't get a cell signal or a great cell signal, that downloading these things onto your phone can often uh, be helpful so that you can easily access them um, in your practice. One more about clinical practice. This is a little bit of a fun one, but can also really be tremendously helpful. It's called Medibabble and it is a medical translation tool. And it doesn't require an internet connection. It's only available for iPhone or iOS, uh, so not on Android. And, um, and we've heard about people uh, uh, in Manitoba that are using this when they're trying to communicate with patients. And sometimes uh, if the patient doesn't speak English at all, or if their English is really limited, and especially for, medical jargon. It can be hard to, um, to translate. So you can see in this example here, there's, uh, is it hard to take a deep breath? Does your chest feel tight? And it will translate this into any, um, almost any language. And then so you can um, show it to your, to your patient um, and then they can help communicate. It, it's just a communication tool. So it seems like a little bit, um, Sometimes you wouldn't even think about that, but if you've been in that instance where you're trying to communicate with someone and just Oh, I'm restored. Oh, there we go. Sorry, just a little blip in our internet. Thanks for your patience with that. Uh, there's also a million calculators uh, for all kinds of different things. So uh, I've listed some here, QXMD Calculate, MedCalc, MediMath, MedCalc 3000. And this isn't just your, you know, um, 36 times 22. 
this is uh, there's all kinds of different ones for insulin dosing and medication dosing and um, all, all kinds of things. So if there's a certain kind of calculation that you are interested in doing or like dose unit converters, uh, then definitely search in your app store for that kind of app because there's going to be one. And I'm also going to talk about specialty apps. So we have a little cartoon here that says, do you want the pill, the suppository, the patch, or the app? Because there's definitely an app for that. Uh, so we're going to get you, you know, before we, I've created one more poll. I'm just going to launch a poll here to see if you were able to find the, the question box or the chat box. So if you can just respond, that would be great because only four people um, had responded in the chat box. And I just want to get a sense of whether people, okay, so most people were, but some people weren't. Thanks again for that. So again, at the bottom of your screen, you should be able to see the, um, it's a blue, blue and white uh, flower. Um, if you click on that, then you'll have a box that comes up or somewhere on your screen, you'll see a little arrow, orange arrow pointing sideways. If you click on that, um, then there should, then the go-to webinar box should pop back up for you. And then you can um, enter in the questions section. So I want to know if you have a favorite healthcare app, or if you are aware of um, a popular healthcare app that your colleagues are using or that your friends are using. So if you just want to take a, uh, a second. Okay, so somebody has already responded. Thank you for that. Let's have everybody follow suit. Um, somebody said people are using up to date. It's very popular and it's very popular because it's very good. It's easy to use. Um, it's accessible. It's got great information. So anybody else just enter in that questions box. So we'll give you a few seconds. You can um, uh, please continue to respond. I know, I know that um, sometimes the go to webinar page, once you've lost it, then it's a little tricky to get back. So we have this example of, oh, sorry. Sorry, uh, I just wanted to, to jump in there. So um, one thing that might be tri tripping people up. Um, so if you've clicked on that orange arrow and the bo overall box comes up, um, there is kind of a, a, a gray heading says chat and there's like a little triangle beside it. You actually have to click on that triangle to make it move down and then the, the option to, um, to chat comes up. So there's a, there should be a box that says type your stuff here. Thanks. And I think it's questions that shows up on the, might be I think chat, it, might be questions. Yeah. Uh, I think it shows up as questions on our side, but on the participant side, it's labeled as chat. Oh, okay. Perfect. Which is very confusing for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and somebody else has responded they're using Fitbit or the health app that's um, built into the iPhone. Great. Those are both great ones. This one uh, that we've got on the screen is an example of like there are so many um, specialty apps it is uh, it can be overwhelming but also it can be amazing uh, Christine found one in the Android store that's called Zapakito and it's by the Caribbean Public Health Agency uh, and it's to talk about um, it's designed to help educate people particularly children about mosquitoes and how they spread, how they breed, how they spread Zika and dengue fever and different things. And like you can see, I think this looks really cool. And I am a bit cranky that I can't um, try it on my iPhone. So uh, we, could, we can't obviously cover every single specialty app, but if you are interested in a topic, um, you know, like, um, like uh, Zika or West Nile or bedwetting or any other kind of healthcare topic, just search it in your app store and give it a try to see if there is an app. So some examples we just thought we'd mention, uh, Canadian Red Cross has the first aid app. This is amazing because you don't have to have like a little first aid manual like in your car or in your you know hiking backpack. You can just have it on your phone downloaded. 
Um, Alberta has their emergency alert app. Uh, Center, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, they've got an app. There's one just on gout. There's one for anesthesiologists on gas. There's one for nurses about um, scheduling and communication. Like there is an app for everything. Uh, so um, if you, oh, and somebody else, else has said they've got a favorite, the Diabetes Canada guidelines. They like to have that app. That's awesome. So I'm gonna change over to Christine here in just a second. There we go. Okay, so I think we, we have switched over. Um, and I'm just gonna talk a little bit about um, some, some general health and wellness apps. Um, originally, I, I had planned to demo some, but the, the, the latency, makes for a bit of a delay so maybe i'll just chat and if there's anything in particular that uh that i have downloaded that you guys want to see we can we can do that um oh, hold on there we go um so like orvi said there are so many apps um and like you name the topic there's a million apps for it um we picked out a few here so for example um these three are all uh put out by different um, health agencies. So for for example, the Mindfulness Coach, that's a free one, that's on Android. Um, and that's put out by the VA in the US. And it's about uh, learning to develop mindfulness, um, you know, the, the meditation kind of aspect of things um, for, for, for mental health uh, benefits. Uh, we've also got one called and I'm not sure if it's supposed to be herbalist or herbalist, um, but that's put out by the, the NIH for their Complementary and Integrative Health Center. And that one's both iPhone and Android. And that one's, that one's kind of cool um, because it's, it's essentially, it's a book, right? So you can say, well, I'm interested in uh, cinnamon, right? And oh, if I take cinnamon, is that gonna help me out with my diabetes? And it has, Kind of a, a summary of, of what's known about it based on the research literature that's that's available um it talks about uh and and i happen to know because i looked at the one for cinnamon um at this point like there's no evidence that taking cinnamon is gonna is gonna help you out with your blood sugar um which you know it would be nice if it did <laughs> but that's that's not in the cards um and it has you know references so you can go back and, and look at the research for particular things and they've got pictures too so like there's a picture of aloe vera so you can see what it looks like, um, what people use it for, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, there's a third one that one of our colleagues actually recommended to us, and it's Can Immunize. And the Ottawa Ho Hospital Research Institute put that one out. And it is basically um, record keeping, right? So for your immunizations. So it'll, it'll keep track of what immunizations you and your family have received. Um, I believe it, it has, it'll, it'll remind you. I'm not sure if you've looked at that one or be, but it'll, it'll be like, Hey, you, you're supposed to get your, your booster for, you know, whichever. Um, and it's just kind of a way to keep track of all that stuff um, and make sure you're up to date on your immunizations. So that's pretty cool. Um, there are also other groups. Um, <laughs> exercise is a big, Diet and exercise are huge, huge, huge topics um, for apps. And we've got a couple examples here. Orvi's favorite is Fitzpark, which I am disappointed is not available in Android, just saying. Um, and that, I think that was Physiotherapist Canada. Was that right, Orvi? Um, it's a Canadian physiotherapist that created it, yes. Oh, okay, my mistake. Um, but it's it's one of those apps where you know that'll it'll suggest exercises and have little demos and things like that um so people can can get fit um and i've also got one called zombies run and that one is it's 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 intended to make running actually enjoyable <laughs> um so the premise behind zombies run is that um it's kind of a, an interactive story if you will right so you're you know you're 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 going along you're you're doing your run and um then it will cut into your music or whatever it is you're listening to and it'll say oh you know this this development in the story there's zombies around the corner and then you have to like 
run away or you have to, you know, find things. And, 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 and uh, it's kind of an immersive experience. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and in comparison, Fitzpark is just mean and the buzzer goes and you have to do really hard exercises that without it telling you what to do, you would totally slack off him. Um, there you go. Yeah. So um, so I, I know we've kind of tried out the, the, the chat box. We can try it out again. Um, has anybody tried any, any wellness apps out there? And if so, do you have a favorite? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we had the one response about Fitbit or the health app that's on the iPhone. I know that that's really popular, especially with people with the Apple Watch. So I'm just going to natter away as um, everybody tells us about theirs in the chat box. Um, yeah, the one built into the Apple Watch um, and into the iPhone is really nice because it, it just is like some simple things. Like every hour you should be standing up. And if you do that, then you get a ring and it closes and then you sort of like get a badge and it's incentive based in that way. Uh, we've had a couple so far. We've got one that's my fitness pal. That's often a really popular one and Runtastic. I know that was one that we were considering. Um, it was hard not to just create a, an entire hour presentation of going like, my fitness pal is great and Runtastic is great and Fitbit is great and this is great. So we tried to <laughs> narrow it. Uh, Swerk It, that's a really good one too. And what was that? it's very work similar. It? Swerk It, as like work, but swerk. Okay. Um, or like wet and work it or work up. So, um, and you can pick various workouts for your goals. Yeah, so that's a good one. It's similar, similar to Fitspark. These are all really great ones. Those are the responses so far, Christine. The responses? Okay, well, that's fair. Um, we'll just, in, in the interest of time, we'll, we'll move on. Um, there are other apps as well, other than like healthcare oriented stuff. Um, and we thought we'd mention a few of those. So in terms of productivity, so, you know, things like uh, you might work, use to, to help you in your work or even just keeping your, your outside of work life kind of uh, organized and on track. Um, there are a few to mention. Evernote um, is usually pretty popular and that's useful for uh, note taking if you can have different projects and files and things like that. Um, and it is available um, as, as an app, but also you can log in via a computer and, and, and use it that way. Um, and that's something that you can share with other people as well. So if you have like a group project, um, you can collaborate with that. We did mention GoToWebinar, of course, um, and oops, sorry about that. Um, oops. And uh, as Orvi mentioned, there's there's an interesting difference between the iPhone version and the Android version in that um, for both of them, you can watch a presentation. Um, so like if you're on the go, you can you can participate in a in a MyNet webinar. Um, but Android is the only one that will let you be a presenter and share your screen, that kind of thing. So that's an interesting difference. Um, one of my favorites um, is Office Time Timekeeper. And I don't know how many of you would have the same kind of need, but um, in my previous uh, job, we kept track of how much time we spent working on um, literature searches and stuff for different projects for different people and departments and all that kind of thing. And um, this one is something that is um, both free and paid, but I found I, I, I bit the bullet and I bought the paid one and I loved it because you could run reports and then you find out, oh, uh, for, for such and such project for this task, because uh, you could divide it you know, within project into specific tasks. You know, I spent four hours or however long, and you can export those to Excel. Um, and it it was just really useful for me. Okay, so I, I, I like that one a lot, but unfortunately it was only an Apple device uh, item. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, one that Orvi brought up uh, the other day was Wonderlist. Um, and again, this is one of those things where you can you can make lists, uh, you know, check them off as you're done. You, you have different categories, so maybe you have one for the groceries, maybe you have one for, um, you know, gift ideas, you know, for for Christmas for your family. Um, 
maybe it's it's just like you know all the, all the yard work that you have to do this summer before it snows um and you can share this uh with with other people as well right so um if you know geez my my husband needs to fix that sidewalk you know leading up from the the driveway to the front door then you know that can be assigned to him right um and things you know we can just kind of keep track of stuff um so i have not used that one to its full capacity <laughs> but, uh, but and i can just mention and, and when uh, when we pop the screen back over to me i'll sh the wonder list is really neat too like i use it a lot for my personal stuff like the stuff that christine just mentioned all those lists that are running through my head like what do i need to pick up today and what's that book i heard about that i really want to read and what was that movie i wanted to watch uh, and the next time I go to Costco, what do I need to pick up there? So I have all of those, but I also use it for work. Like if I'm on the, you know, on my way home and I'm like, oh gosh, I need to make that phone call and send that email and do this other thing. I can just pop those all into a list on my phone. And if I'm thinking about things that I want to work on with Christine, I have shared lists with us. She's just admitted she hasn't looked at, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so we have shared lists. that's like, okay, what do we need to do to get ready for the webinar? And uh, then we can just create the list of tasks. And then as we've completed them, we can just mark, mark them off. So then we don't have to be like, okay, did you, did you set this up and go to webinar? Did you create the handout? Did you send the survey? Did you, uh, you can just have those lists and it all syncs to your desktop. So then you can, when you get to work, you can have it open on your desktop and you can also have it on your phone. So it's, um, it's a great productivity tool. There you go. Um, so yes, I have, I have looked at it in my defense, but as far as I could tell, we're not connected, <laughs> but maybe that's just my, my, uh, noviceness for that particular app. Um, so moving on news is a huge, huge thing. Um, and like, if you, if you were to go to your app store and, and search for news, there's a a whole ton of stuff that's going to come up and you can see uh, as an example here like you've got things from the news outlets we've got like the BBC the CTV news Fox News um, etc so if you're a huge fan of CNN you can download their app um, and, and get your news from them but there's also kind of uh, third-party things right so like for example Google News is is the very the top one because um, it's a Google phone that I've got so of course they're gonna they're gonna promote that stuff and it's already actually comes installed on my phone um, to start with so uh, if you're wondering what that little green check mark is I think that's that's what that's about um, but there's also some others that you can see on here like the you know Canada news um, you know breaking news so those are third-party um, apps as well so there's all kinds of options um, if you're if you're if you want to get the news on your your device. Okay, so just kind of to sum up again, you know, when you're looking for apps, just you know try and try and figure out what it is you're looking for. Read some reviews. Look at the permissions. Um, try it out because you know it. It, it, I'll say it won't hurt. <laughs> um, so if you if you find a candidate that looks good, um, see if it is. Like it, there are times when something sounds good on paper, but you know when it comes comes time to actually using it, it doesn't really fit with your workflows or or your preferences. And then if it's not, you know, if it's not good, take it off, uninstall it, find something different. Um, so last poll. We promise. Um, is there anything uh, that you guys learned about in this particular session that um, you're interested in trying? I'll give you a couple minutes and then I'll pass it back to Orby. So again, you can just respond in the um, in the chat or the question box, and we've got a response that says, "Yeah, they're going to look at the mindfulness one, the mindfulness coach." Yeah, that's a great one. I mean, when you search for mindfulness, there's a million, but um, that one that's uh, that's it's great. 
Uh, somebody else has said the uh, they're going to try them all. Yeah, nice. uh, that's wonderful. Uh, somebody has said the the herb list or the herbal herbal list, however we say that the herb list. And I know when Christine told me about it, I was like, oh, that sounds a little bit boring. It's just like cinnamon. You could use it for this, and aloe vera. You put it on your skin when you're a bit sunburned, and it was it was way better than that. And it was so it's so evidence based, and it just tells you straight up. Like spoiler, when we were reading about aloe, it said there really is no evidence for like all those things that people use aloe for. There's no evidence that that is either safe nor effective. Um, oh, and, and don't take it orally, by the way. <laughs> don't take it orally. Uh, so some more responses are Runtastic uh, and the medical calculators, Medibabel. Awesome. Well, we're so glad to hear that you've been interested in um, some of these apps. And I'll just reiterate what Christine said too, is um, you know, there's so many apps right now that we can recommend some that we know are helpful. And if ever you come across one that you're using, your colleagues are using, even if it's just like a daily productivity thing, um, we would love to hear about them uh, so we can share them with others and, uh, so, and you just have to take a little bit of time, download those apps, check those permissions, and try them out. And if you find that you're using it all the time, well, then there you go. Uh, and if you find that it's just never, it's never actually telling you when the buses are coming, then download that thing. Or, uh, sorry, uninstall that thing. Okay, I'm going to take the screen back. And I'll just show you in our final moment. So this is Wonderlist. And you can see in the middle, uh, or on the left-hand side, there's a list and I've got them. These are things I've created. So I've got like my general to-do list, things I need to do today. And then I've got one here, prep for my net education session. So that's the one I'm in. And these, this is one I shared with Christine and she turned me down and didn't accept it. I, I guess. did not. <laughs> and I, just, I don't, I never got that. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we need to figure out how to sync that. Uh, and so I've just got like, who's going to do which slide? We've got to send our email reminder to the MyNet listserv. We've got to send it to Manitoba Health. We need to, um, we needed to uh, print something off. And so as these are done, I can just like um, tap it and then it disappears. Uh, so then we can see only the ones that are current. And if I want to look at the ones that are completed, I can also click on the show completed to do's and then it'll list um, the ones that we've already completed, just so we know where we are. So it can be a really helpful tool. And um, yeah, I use it for work and for home. So we'll go to the, I'll just zing through these and take us to our, oops, our final slide. Um, and what we'll be doing is we will be sending out the slides we've used today. And we will also be sending out a um, quick little survey. We'd love a little bit more of your feedback. Thank you so much for participating in all our polls. And thank you so much for coming. Uh, we will soon be announcing our fall education series. We know in September we're doing the introduction to MyNet and up to date. So if you've got new employees that are starting in September or people that are just, you know, feeling like back to school is a good time to be learning some new stuff, um, please send them our way. And the recording of today's session will also be posting it on the mynet.ca website. So um, if you've got people, uh, if you like today's session and you think other people would like it too, you can send them over um, to that. Anything else to add, Christine? Um, I don't think so. Just, you know, thanks everybody for coming. Um, I'm glad that the, the interactivity worked pretty well and no major technical disasters is always good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's exactly 11 o'clock. We'll let everybody um, sign off. If you've got any questions for us, we will be uh, staying on for a few more moments. Thanks so much again. Bye.
Okay, almost everyone has left, so I'm going to close it down, okay? Okay.